Instead of specifying matrix A within the program, let's give the user the option of reading it from a file called, say, input data txt. We first click on the new script icon. We then add in the elements of matrix A, each row being a separate line. Keep in mind that we have used white space to delimit the different numbers. Okay, now let's save it as a text file. Click on the save icon, then change the format from .m to all files. This will allow us to save our file in the format that we wish, in this case, .txt. We now name our file inputdata.txt. And that's it. We will read in this data using the DLM read command. Let's check the documentation to learn how to use this command. Okay, so it seems like the first syntax is all we need for now. We don't need to bother about ranges yet. Note that single quotes are used around the file name as shown in example one. So let's try this command in the command window to see what it does. Type in a equals dlm read and input data.txt, which is our file name, all in single quotes. And we'll close our parentheses and press enter. Great, this is our matrix A once again. Let's just look at our array in the workspace to double check. It looks good. We'll now create a new script called beam4 starting from beam3. So select beam3, and we'll go click here and save as. And we'll choose beam4 for the file name. So comment out the original A matrix specification, and add in the new DLM read code. You can copy and paste it from And we'll add a semicolon at the end of our statement. Save beam 4 and run it. Does this look alright? The plot seems okay, but let's take a look at the workspace. Double click on sigma x. And let's check the middle value at r equals 1. Negative 101.8592, we're good. 